The mainstream media is absolutely turning on Disney CEO Bob Iger. Another massive blow to his legacy, another huge article that points to him being a petulant child in a CEO man's body. Today, folks, we're here to tell you it's not the end of it. We're getting word, perhaps, that other articles are on the way, and it could not be worse timing for the House of Mouse and the man who is determined to stay. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel that changes hearts and minds simply by telling the truth, dragging the Holly Weirds back to the mainstream middle, kicking and screaming. But we know it's good for them. It's the medicine that must go down for the sensible center is where the money is made. Today, folks, let's look at where the money is not being made, and this will give you some kind of an understanding why Bob Iger is losing and losing badly right now in the, uh, in the eye of the institutionalists. It's because while they may agree with some of his policies, they do not agree with going broke doing so. They want both. They want their cake and they want to eat it too. $88.51, the current Disney stock value. By the way, folks, we're not here to give you any kind of financial advice. Please make no financial decisions based on what you hear today. But we will say that if you look back, this cresting, this plateau, this mesa, this grand mesa of the Disney stock, that is when Bob Chapek was in charge of the Disney company. Bob Chapek, of course, is the CEO who was supposed to take over the company, and Bob Iger, now we know, was sniping him in every possible way because Bob Iger's ego got in the way of a smooth transition, and now, apparently, people have had enough. We're going to explain that in just a moment, but I just want you to see that, and I want you to see the timing of it because it's really, really important. February of 2022, is when the uh, major assault happened on Bob Chapek. And I just want you to see that February of 2022, everybody take a look at this, one, uh, $149.47. That was, and, and you'll see why we say this, Bob Chapek was, uh, the effort was begun to take him out entirely, knock him out of the CEO position, February 2022. That amount, by the way, was on par with the highest stock value the company had ever had under Bob Iger, that high being $151.58. So off by $3 from the high, $2 from the high, that Bob Iger had ever achieved, but not the company because under Bob Chapek, it had succeeded far greater than that. But in February of 2022, this stock was red hot still. It had come off the high from the pandemic of people watching Disney Plus and buying up those subscription, uh, subscription plans like mad. But then the all-out assault happened to take out Bob Chapek and put Bob Iger back in. And what was the result of that? Well, if you're going to get the CEO out, you have to get him away from a red-hot brand. And they did so. By the summer of 2022, they had tanked the stock under $100. That was part of the plan to get Bob Iger back. But then, and by the way, why did they want Bob Iger back? Well, they wanted Bob Iger for politics. Bob Iger wanted back in, according to the multiple news reports now that we're getting, because Bob Iger cannot smell his own stink. And so, uh, well, what's happened since Bob Iger came back in? He's terrible. He cannot win. And what we're finding out is that Bob Iger today, well, the clothes are off the emperor. We now know who this man is. Folks, I want to show you this. Uh, this is out of CNN and Tom Elliott, of course, sharing this over on X. This is talking back again about the plan, the effort that was underway to get rid of Bob Chapek and it's Bob Iger trying to gaslight people into believing that, well, he was actually just, you know, he was standing up for children, this being the Florida thing. By the way, this cost the company, the Walt Disney Company, over 100 years, about a trillion dollars. Let me say that again. Bob Iger, in his quest to get rid of Bob Chapek, cost the company about a trillion dollars with a decision that would put the Walt Disney Company and Walt Disney World Resort at odds with Florida over a bill that almost everybody dis or everybody agrees with unless there's propaganda around it. The idea that uh, school children at the age of four should not be told about gender theory. That almost everybody can, can agree with that. Or at least they shouldn't be told about it in official state curriculum by their teachers. So Bob Iger, ever the, uh, ever the uh, uh, defender of human rights, ignore what he does in China, ever the defender of, of human rights, that's what it was about. It wasn't at all about creating a massive, uh, controversy that would be the initiating to removing his boss 
Bob Chapek, because Bob Iger never actually left Disney, uh, but his then boss, Bob Ch uh, Chapek, to remove him because guess what? Bob Iger was told he couldn't fire him anymore. And that's what Bob Iger wanted because he was mad because Bob Chapek was so darn successful. Let's play the tape. A lot of these issues are not necessarily political. It's about right and wrong. So I happen to feel, and I tweeted a, an opinion about the don't say gay bill in Florida. To me, it wasn't politics. It was what is right and what is wrong. And that just seemed wrong. It seemed potentially harmful to kids. When you're dealing with right and wrong, or when you're dealing with something that... This is a man who deals with China, with the CCP, who uh, under his direction, there were... Uh, Credits thanking the Chinese government with the <clears throat> with the inappropriate. I have to watch what I say here, folks. The very inappropriate camps in China. You get my drift. Thanking them because they filmed next to them for Mulan, the live action movie that tanked. Yeah, this man knows right and wrong. Does have a profound impact on your business? Then I just think you he wasn't part of the business, by the way. You have, you'd have to do what is right and not worry about the potential backlash, too. So what was this man actually after? Well, folks, the New York Times has blown the lid off of, of all of it, and I suspect that the mainstream media is turning against Bob Iger because they don't want to see a replay of this. Um, they might agree with Bob's politics. They don't agree with Bob having them desolate when it comes to their bank accounts. Again, take a look. These are the Bob Chapek years. These are the Bob Iger years. Do you want to be up near 200 or do you want to be at 80, right? At the time of recording, $88.59. All right, let's go to the New York Times. It says, during Mr. Iger's tenure, the studio had greenlighted a bevy of projects with progressive social and political themes. But Mr. Chapek, that being the CEO who was ousted after just a very short amount of time, maybe eight months, maybe 11 months, worried the development slate had veered too far left on social issues. Yeah, you think? Guess what? Vindicated, by the way. Disney was being pulled into partisan political debates more frequently, a worrisome situation for a brand that was supposed to stand for everyone. Some board members agreed. Coming up through the pipeline was Strange World, Disney's first animated film focusing on an openly gay teenager. This movie is the flop of all flops, folks. It makes Wish look good. Uh, Miss Katz, a board member, was so opposed to the character that she told Mr. Chapek that she'd have him fired if Disney released the film. He reported the threat to Miss Arnold. That was the head of the board. This already is just insane infighting at Disney that was going on. The film was too too far along for Mr. Chapek to block it, but his fears about Disney's becoming a cultural flashpoint soon materialized. In January 2022, the parental rights and education bill was introduced in Florida. Opponents labeled the bill, Don't Say Gay, because it prohibited classroom discussion of sexual orientation and gender identity for young students. They don't tell you it's pre-K, kindergarten, first grade. You know when they're supposed to be learning the alphabet, the numbers? The Human Rights Campaign, a prominent advocacy organization, soon had more than 100 corporate signatories to a letter opposing the legislation in various state houses, because all of these companies are to this political direction. So they just they just do it, and they're terrified. They're terrified of being uh, organized against. They're, they're terrified of it. Media companies like Comcast, which owns NBC, NBC Universal, had signed on, but Disney, one of the largest employers in Florida, was conspicuously absent. Mr. Chapek realized that staying silent might cause controversy. He called Miss Arnold, who had succeeded Mr. Iger as chairman, to discuss his view that Disney had become too politicized. He mentioned the Florida bill and the pressure on Disney to publicly condemn it. Miss Arnold agreed that Disney should stay above the fray, but she said the company should sign the human rights campaign letter. Since so many companies had already signed, including Nike, General Motors, and Oracle, whose chief executive sat on Disney's board, she didn't envision Disney being singled out for criticism. There was safety in numbers, Mr. Chapek agreed. Again, this is the herd mentality. Now, so, so these are the people that I am semi-defending, but I don't agree with their decisions because they're weak. And that's what ultimately took them down, by the way. Miss Arnold no longer serves on the board. She was ousted. Uh, Chapek was taken down. He's gone. And how did that happen? Because they were weak in the face of a tyrant, Bob Iger. Here's what we've got. On February 1st, the board's first meeting with Mr. Iger, no longer at the company. Finally, right? Jeff Morrell. The new chief corporate affairs officer gave a presentation arguing that Disney should stay out of divisive social and political issues. I just want to say now, literally the first month that Iger was not at the company, that's when he could not stand it and he initiated action to get rid of JPEG. That is how petty Bob Iger is. He is not a man who should be respected for his yachts. He is a man who should be dismissed for his teeny weeny itsy bitsy 
level of confidence because he can't stand for anyone else to run this company. The man has a problem, and Elon Musk is right to point it out. So the very first month, very first board meeting without Bob, he is initiating uh, an, an attempt to take out Chapek. Let's read it. It'll tell you how. He said, Disney should not fight the wars, not the battles, he said, or it should, uh, he should fight the wars, not the battles. He also said Disney employees accustomed to Mr. Iger making public comments supporting progressive positions would need to be reconditioned. The board agreed. The Florida legislation soon vaulted to national attention. On February 8th, President Biden issued a statement on Twitter. And you can see what all that said. Well, we've seen the mental capacities, right? Not getting into politics. Disney remained silent and soon faced an internal revolt. Creative employees, many of them gay or staunchly supportive of gay colleagues and friends, were still seething over the DMED reorganization. That was the effort to take away the ability from the studios to push out propaganda. Uh, on February 24th, Mr. Iger put a match to kindling by reposting Mr. Biden's comment and adding, I'm with the president on this. If passed, this bill will put vulnerable young alphabet people in jeopardy. Kindergartners, folks. Kindergartners. A few days later, a Disney employee group sent a, le sent a letter to Mr. Chapek and other high-ranking executives demanding that Disney oppose the bill and denounce similar legislation pending in other states. Mr. Chapek met with the group the next week, describing the discussion as meaningful, illuminating, and at times deeply moving. And by the way, folks, let's not forget, we believe that the Iger sycophants were all part of that, and whatever they may have actually believed about the legislation, this was about Iger. In the midst of this, Disney's board held an emergency meeting to discuss the mounting controversy. Mr. Chapek told the board that, in keeping with the company's new policy, Disney had not signed the human rights campaign petition. Miss Arnold was taken aback. I'm confused. You told me Disney was going to sign it. The discussion moved on, but Miss Arnold was visibly upset. Mr. Chapek sent her a text. My bad. We decided not to sign. I got busy and forgot to tell you. Again, weakness is what sank these people. Miss Arnold was furious. Despite the pressure from employees, Disney's board agreed to stay the course. Chapek and his corporate affairs team drafted a statement defending his decision not to comment, which was circulated to Miss Arnold and the rest of the board. Corporate statements do very little to change outcomes or minds. Instead, they are often weaponized by one side or the other to further divide and inflame. But I just want to say, folks, and by the way, here comes Abigail. Uh, poor Abigail. She's still at me blocked, I'm sure. She's an angry person. Um, I just want to say, what was it that, what did what, what set all this ablaze? And eventually, j Beck would be the guy who goes down for it. Um, what set all this ablaze? Well, Iger. Had Iger not posted that, and he did it on purpose, there's no doubt about it. Had Iger not posted that, then you would have never seen Chapek go down, I don't believe. They would have actually sailed through this. They may have set a uh, new course where corporations would have felt more free to say, you know what, we don't want to be involved in this stuff. This is not good for us. We There's no good in us being a part of making a determination whether or not kids learn about gender theory in pre-K. But they were weak, and Iger was strong. And that's why all of these people who were critical of Iger are gone. All of them. Every single one. That is the world in which Disney sits. So why do we have these huge, massive exposés called the Palace Coup at the Magic Kingdom at the New York, New York Times, which is one now of what I believe will be many coming out, and I have some indications of that. What is it that's driving the mainstream to cover this? I think there's much attention now, much attention on the fact that Chapek was right. Look at those values. Although weak, Chapek was right. Double double the stock value under Chapek as, I, as Iger. Somebody somewhere wants Iger to leave now. Somebody somewhere has had enough of Mr. Bob, Bob Almighty. Folks will see lots of pressure, and this is very important that this come out uh, today. The timing is incredible. Well, there's a, uh, there's a presidential debate happening on ABC. We'll talk about that during the pro show. Disney is going to be under a tremendous amount of scrutiny, and you know which way Bob Iger swings. Folks, until the next time, we need you to uh, help us out just a wee bit. Click the like button, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms. It is the notification bell. Drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. Folks, we'll see you real soon. In the meantime, keep learning, keep growing, and as always, keep having fun. This is Wilton the Troll reporting for That's Park Place, and I'm surrounded by loving and adoring people who are peacefully trying to make sure that poor kids aren't cold in the winter. And... <laughs> Just behind me, you can see a totally natural bonfire for baking cookies or making marshmallows.
Yeah, so, Wilson, we're, we're really appreciate the effort and stuff, but uh, we're looking for real and, you know, accurate news reporting <laughs> on that park place. So, not like most news outlets, huh? No. 